Starting off the game, we are introduced to single father Joel receiving a birthday present from daughter Sarah. What's this? Your birthday? Before eventually putting her to bed. Sarah wakes up in the middle of the night to the phone ringing. It's Joel's brother Tommy, and he sounds panicked. Hey, on the phone. Uh, Uncle Tommy, what, what time is it? I need to talk to your dad now. There's something. When the phone cuts out, so Sarah heads down to find her dad. She finds Joel freaking out about the neighbours acting deranged and trying to break in. Jimmy! Jimmy, you stay back! Yeah, he's Jimmy, definitely sick. <laughs> Ooh. Realising something bad is happening, Tommy arrives and we jump into the car to try and escape town. But after reaching the highway, we realised everyone else has the exact same idea and the roads are backed up. People then start going crazy and attacking each other, so we try to find another way out of town. Go, go, go. What just happened? What the fuck just happened? Did you see that? Yes, I saw it. God damn Where'd you go? People everywhere are going crazy, and we get cleaned up by another car. I must say zombies. Run the zombies over. Oh! With the car destroyed, we must try and escape on foot. Unfortunately, Sarah hurt her leg really bad during the crash, so we have to carry it. Very 50-50 we make it to the outskirts of town where we are met by a soldier who is ordered to take us out. Through hell. Okay, we just need... The soldier reluctantly opens fire on us. Bro, but before he can finish us off, Tommy takes him out. However, Sarah was shot badly and doesn't make it out alive. Baby. 20 years later, Joel is living in a Boston quarantine zone, making his way as a smuggler with his partner and friend, Tess. Tess tells us that a guy called Robert knows we are looking for him and is sending guys after us, so we set out to go and find him first. I know where he's hiding. Like We make our way through the streets where we engage in an optional conversation, one of the many collectibles we need for our platinum trophy. All right. We try to exit out the gates when there's an attack on the quarantine zone, so we have to find another way out. Oh shit. Utilizing a secret passageway, we gather some supplies and sneak out through some old rundown buildings. In one of these buildings, we get our first trophy for collecting a firefly pendant. First trophy. We eventually come across a building full of spores, which if we breathe in, will infect us, so we gotta wear some masks. We come across a man who's half dead, crushed under some rubble. His mask is broken, so we have to put him out of his misery. Right, that turn. Continuing on, we have our first encounter with some infected called runners. Runners are people who have only recently been infected. They are fast, but with weak attacks. We sneak our way past and make our way back outside where we find our next firefly pendant hanging in a tree. Making our way through a little refugee outpost, we find two of the collectible artifacts, wanted Marlene, before running into a few of Robert's men here sent after us. After a quick confrontation, Tess opens fire, starting a shootout, which we win. Nice. We push through, but more of Robert's men are lurking, so we got to deal with them first. So, utilizing stealth, we take care of a few enemies and find a warehouse nice. key. Teamwork. Warehouse key acquired. We make our way onto the docks where we spot Robert surrounded by a lot of his men. We grab a nearby artifact and go and clear out all of Robert's men before eventually finding Robert who opens fire on us and tries to pull a runner. We just want to talk, Robert. We come, you Robert, man. To talk about. Put your gun down. You have our guns. Oh. He's running. Is that one of them? Robert. We make chase and eventually catch up to him. Oh, dead end, buddy. Robert tells us he has sold our guns to the Fireflies, a rebel militia group who opposed the quarantine zones. It's the Fireflies. I owe the Fireflies. Since Robert is of no more use to us, Tess just takes him out. Oh, okay, he's dead. All of a sudden, a leader from the Fireflies called Marlene shows up, and she is badly hurt. Marlene tells us if we want our guns back, we're going to have to earn them, and she informs us of a smuggling job she has for us. You do that? I'll give you your guns back. We follow Marlene, and she leads us to a young girl called Ellie, 
Now you got shot or whatever, but like, you should be able to open the door. Oh, wait. Let her go. Marlene then informs us that Ellie is actually the thing she needs smuggled out of the city. Fireflies, it'll meet you at the Capitol building. That's not exactly close. Everyone seems to be very against the idea, but we eventually head out. Joel and Ellie make their way to an apartment room while Tess goes to confirm Marlene has our guns. Joel has a quick nap while waiting for Tess to return. Nighttime hits and Tess finally arrives and we agree to the job and wasting no more time, we head out. We grab a couple collectibles from the apartment then make our way outside. Fine. We try to sneak through the pouring rain but we are caught off guard by a couple of soldiers who then test us to see if we are infected. Ellie attacks and after a brief scuffle we find out that Ellie tested positive to the infection. Shift to the knee. Oh. Why the hell are we smuggling an infected girl? Ellie explains how she was bitten weeks ago and she's still fine. I can explain. You better explain fast. But before we can figure out what is going on, we make a break for it before the reinforcements show up. Go, go. Run. Trying to escape the soldiers, we make our way through the sewers. Ellie then tells us we are actually smuggling her to a Firefly quarantine zone where they are working on a cure. And since Ellie seems to be immune, she might be the key to finding one. Yeah, we've heard that before, huh, Tess? Mm hmm we have. And the... Whatever happened to me is the key to finding a vaccine. Oh, Jesus. We make our way up onto the streets again where we grab a couple more collectibles and make our way through some buildings. We get attacked by our first clicker. A clicker is someone who has been infected for at least a year. They are blind, so rely on echolocation, but are a lot stronger than the runners. Is that a clicker? After dealing with the clicker, we find our first shiv door. One of many we need to open for the Platinum Trophy. Patch yourself up. Continuing through the building, we run into some more clickers, so we have to be smart. Using bottles and other items to create noise distractions. <laughs> Further through the building, we find a revolver. Which is like a better handgun. And then we make our way past another group of runners and clickers Fine. before escaping into the subway. Down in the subway is a whole heap of infected, but also a fair few collectibles. So avoiding all the clickers, we make sure to grab them all before heading out the other side. When we get outside, we find another artifact in a truck before narrowly avoiding a bunch of runners. Hey, whoa, all right, there you go. Ooh, that was way too close for comfort. Inside the garage, we find our first workbench used to upgrade our weapons. We then accidentally get separated due to some falling planks of wood when we are ambushed by some more infected. Run. Run. We sneak around a heap of clickers, finding the next shiv door before we are able to reunite with Tess and Ellie fighting off the infected. Ooh, ooh. Fending off a whole heap of infected and engaging in a couple optional conversations with Tess and Ellie, we make our way across some roofs and see our destination. So is that everything you hoped for? Apparently. Still out? You. We make our way to the Capitol building where the Fireflies are supposed to be collecting Ellie. Unfortunately, they're all dead. No, no, no. Ooh, ooh, everyone's dead. Not knowing what to do next, she's infected. Tess reveals she's actually been bitten, and this is her last stop. What do you mean? Show it to me. Oh, Christ. We hear some soldiers rock up, and yeah, Tess, not wanting to turn, sacrifices herself to hold them off while we escape. Yes. There is no way that I will not turn into one of those things. Escaping upstairs and out the back, we find ourselves a hunting rifle, which we use to take out a bunch of soldiers who are trying to block our exit. And we escape back into the subway, which is full of spores. I wasn't lying to you. 
Ellie, being immune, doesn't need a mask, and we sneak through the trains, but the subway is flooded, and Ellie can't actually swim. We use a pallet to help Ellie get across the water, and we escape the subway. Joel tells Ellie he has a friend in a nearby town who can get us a car, so we make our way into a little deserted town where there is a whole heap of collectibles we need to grab. Anybody else live in this town? As far as I know, we just... Five, five. Goddamn infected. Sadly, we came across two shiv doors, but I didn't have any shivs on me, so we have to come back later to get these ones. We cross more rooftops and almost blow up Ellie before we get snared by someone's trap that almost gets us killed. Am I dead? Having to fight a bunch of runners while upside down, we somehow managed to survive with the help of a mysterious guy who helps us escape yeah, almost took my head off. and leads us to his nearby safe house. We find out the mysterious man's name is Bill and is actually the guy we are looking for, but he is pretty hostile towards us. Yeah, you can arrest us. You damn near break my shooting arm. We come up with a plan to sneak to the other side of town and find parts to get a car up and running. You help me go gather it. Bill's safe house has a few more collectibles and we get a trophy for finding our first training manual. Is that coming Andy? Oh, she's upgraded. Hey, ah, oh, trophy. We head down into Bill's cellar and gear up, unlocking a shotgun and finding another workbench. We head upstairs and go out a window, and we see the school we need in the distance. Look, there's a school. We sneak around a group of clickers lurking nearby, and then make our way through a heavily infested town that's got a few more collectibles. We then encounter a horde of runners just outside the school. After managing to escape the horde, we break into the school where we find that the parts we are looking for are gone. The horde breaks in and we need a new plan. We start making our way through the school and just like everywhere else, it is infested with clickers and runners. Then all of a sudden, a big ass bloater comes out of nowhere. After getting our head caved in a couple of times, we managed to defeat the bloater and get out of the school. Oh, he's dead. Oh, he's dead. Oh. Oh. Some runners managed to chase us, but we quickly escape over a fence. Stress me out, Joel, man. We find Bill's former partner, Frank. In Frank's garage, we find out that it was him that stole the car parts we needed, and he has a car ready to go. We on the cars. Fucking hell. After an optional conversation with Ellie, we search inside Frank's house and find an artifact, which is actually a note Frank left for Bill. We give the note to Bill, and he throws the note away. After we go and pick the note back up, we unlock the In Memoriam trophy. We push start the car, but get ambushed by another horde of runners. Once the car is up and running, and after fending off a heap of infected, we jump into the back and make our escape. We drop Bill off back at his safe house and continue on our way. A very long drive later, we arrive at a town which has a bunch of hunters that try to set up an ambush. Oh dear, group them. Get them. They take out our car and almost kill us. But we overpower them and now must continue our journey on foot. Oh, oh. We kill a bunch of hunters and sneak through some back buildings and into a garage where we grab some collectibles. Flies, lovely. We continue our way through the buildings, grabbing even more collectibles, and we also find our first comic book collectible in a bus, which unlocks us the Savage Starlight Fan Trophy for doing so. Savage Starlight Fan, find a comic. Pushing through the streets, we take on some more hunters, and afterwards, we get another optional conversation with Ellie. This time, trying to lighten the mood, Ellie starts reading from her joke book, which we have to listen to before we can move on. The book just fell on my head. I only have myself to blame. Are we? Gotta wait for it to complete it, Jax. A book just fell on my head. 
I only have my shelf to blame. <laughs> Ruined it. Grabbing a few more collectibles, we find some hunters acting pretty suspicious, so we gotta go check it out. But before we can, Ellie decides it's a good time to whip out some more of her incredible jokes. What did the mermaid wear to her math class? What? An algae bra. Just inside the building is even more collectibles, and we head back up to Ellie, who hits us with even more jokes. I tried to catch some fog earlier. I missed. Continuing upstairs, we run into the hunters, and there is a lot of them, so it takes us a while to kill them all. After taking out all the hunters, we climb out onto a broken elevator, which ends up falling and taking Joel with it, and I don't know how we survive. Making our way through some deep waters, and to unlock the next door, we need to find a key card and to activate a generator. But activating the generator alerts a group of infected to our location, including another big bloater. So I leg it out of there and make my way back to the door. We head upstairs and a hunter gets the jump on us, almost taking us out before Ellie comes and saves the day. I'm dying. Dying here. Oh, there she is. About time. Grabbing some collectibles, we make our way onto a balcony where we spot a bunch of hunters in the street. We hand Ellie the rifle and trust her to get our back, then go to work on the remaining hunters. After dealing with these hunters, we have an optional conversation with the hanging dead guy. Hunters then arrive in an armoured car with a turret and gun down some stragglers. Sneaking through the streets, we come across some snipers, so we have to move carefully. We take down the snipers and grab more collectibles when the hunter car from before rocks up and starts trying to mow us down with their big turret. We have to try and avoid the car by making our way through buildings, making sure not to get caught, but it keeps on us and we have to take the high ground. Okay. They can't see it. We try to go through some apartment buildings when we are jumped by a random guy. Yep. <laughs> but we soon realise they are not enemies. We team up with our new friends and we escape together. But before leaving the apartment, we quickly grab a couple more collectibles. Hiding from the hunter vehicle and some hunters on foot, we make our way to our new friend Henry's hideout, where they have been laying low for a while now. Hold up in here. A few days. Henry tells us he is looking to join up with the Fireflies, and since we are also trying to get to the Fireflies, we team up and come up with an escape plan to get out of the city. Good for the Fireflies too. Nighttime hits, and it's time to make our escape. <laughs> we take down two hunters and then we have to sneak around the remaining hunters without being seen and turn off the generator to unlock our next trophy, Lights Out. Oh, hey, found me. We fight off some hunters and get through the gate. Seemingly in the clear, we try to climb over a truck, but the ladder breaks and Henry panics and makes a break for it, leaving Joel and Ellie behind. We're leaving. What? What's this bullshit? Hey, now! What the fuck, Henry? Somehow not getting shot, we quickly make our way through another garage, but the car catches up to us, so we have to run. Oh, fuck. I ran pretty wide. Run. Reaching a dead end, we are forced to jump into the water, where we almost drown. We wake up to realise we have been saved by Henry and Sam. I saved you. Once again on the same page, we continue our journey together. We get a few more collectibles from an old boat, and then we make our way back into the sewers. We get more collectibles before we reach some deep water, so we must grab another crate to help Ellie across the water, then quickly rejoin Henry and Sam across this random moving platform to get our next trophy, Waterlogged. Waterlogged. Ride the sewer contraption with Henry. I'm only 8%. Continuing through the sewers and a few more collectibles later, we set off a trap which separates us into two groups. Oh, shit. Sam! When some clickers arrive, and we must escape quickly. You, man. Just go, get out of here. Dealing with a group of clickers, we manage to regroup with Henry and Ellie and fend off the horde of infected before managing to escape back outside. Are they like unlimited? <laughs> Reaching the next town, we grab a whole bunch of collectibles and we find another workbench where we upgrade our pistol to max, unlocking the combat ready trophy. We also find another safe and get the sticky fingers trophy for opening all safes. Open all safes? 
Moving on, we encounter hunters hiding throughout the buildings, including snipers, so we must flank them and push forward. We take down all the hunters and we eventually make our way to the sniper. Man, how'd you cover? We then use the sniper to provide support to our friends who are being ambushed by a heap more hunters. When all of a sudden, that pesky hunter vehicle from before arrives. But for some weird reason, he pokes his head out the top, so we snipe him. During celebrations, a horde of infected arrive and it is starting to get serious. Quickly providing sniper support, the group make it back to Joel and we all sneak out the back and find a place to hide out for the night. I could die happy if I could just ride one around the block. <laughs> Sam seems to be distressed about something when he reveals that he has actually been bitten. Bit rude, bro, bit rude. We wake up in the morning to find out Sam has turned. After Henry and Sam's demise, Joel and Ellie are once again on their own and continue our way to get Ellie to the Fireflies. Making our way across a dam, we ignore Ellie's high five attempt to get the left hanging trophy. <laughs> we arrive at an outpost where we almost get shot when our brother Tommy comes out to greet us. Tommy. Found him. Shit. Making our way inside Tommy's community and grabbing some collectibles, we find a cute dog and give it a pat, unlocking the Who's a Good Boy trophy. Oh, he's a perfect hey, guard dog. <laughs> That's a good boy. Very good boy. Very good. He is a good boy. A couple more collectibles later, we ask Tommy for some help with our plan, but he is incredibly hesitant. This isn't for me, Tommy. This is for your damn cause. My cause is my family now. When all of a sudden, hunters have broken into the base and we have a shootout. Oh, I'm shit. After clearing out all the hunters, Tommy decides to help us out. But Ellie, not wanting to be a burden, steals a horse and rides off on her own. That girl of yours, she took one of our horses and rode off. Joel and Tommy grab some horses of their own and head out to find Ellie. We reach a town where Ellie is hiding inside a house. We grab a couple of collectibles and then speak to Ellie when some hunters find us. Oh. We clear them out before making an escape on our horses. Tommy leads us to the Firefly Town, but we decide to continue on without Tommy. Adios. We head into a garage where we find a flamethrower and unlock the geared up trophy for crafting one of every item. Grabbing a couple more collectibles, we have to make our way through a building full of infected. Why was I not Continuing through the campus and getting a heap more collectibles, we run into another bloater, which we torch with our newly equipped flamethrower. Die! Arriving at the Firefly building, we realise that the building is deserted and that all the Fireflies have retreated to a different hospital far away, but Joel knows where it is. Is it far? It ain't close. Some hunters find us and we have to escape, making our way through the building and taking out plenty of hunters when Joel gets caught by surprise and thrown off a balcony. Oh! oh. Getting impaled, it looks like it's game over for Joel. We struggle to escape, but with the help of Ellie, we make it outside and manage to get onto a horse. Time skips forwards and we are now in the middle of winter. While Joel is still wounded, Ellie is out hunting a deer for food when she runs into a couple of strangers who want the deer. Striking up a deal to trade the deer for some medication, one of the guys heads back to their camp to retrieve some antibiotics and Ellie and new guy David hunker down in a nearby building. When all of a sudden some infected find our location and start to attack. After fighting off a horde of infected, they start to overwhelm us so we need to retreat. We evade some clickers, then face off against another horde of infected, including clickers and another bloater, before we finally reach safety. Oh, geez. But when things seem safe, David reveals that he is searching for a man traveling with a little girl who slaughtered a bunch of his men. Everything happens for a reason. 
Giving Ellie the antibiotics and offering her protection, Ellie, realizing the danger, makes a run for it back to Joel. Ellie makes it back to Joel and gives him the medication. But realizing it was a trap and the group from before have followed her back to Joel, Ellie sets out to try and lead them all away. Taking off on horse, she reaches a town where she must continue on foot. Ellie takes out a whole bunch of hunters, but David catches up to her and kidnaps her. This little rat. Bloody David, man. Come on. Ellie wakes up in a cell where she realizes David and his group are cannibals. We then go back to Joel as he wakes up and realizes Ellie is gone, so we set out to find her. Heading out into the snow, we take on a few of the cannibals and capture one for interrogation. We torture him for information and get everything we need. Focus right here, right here. Back to Ellie, we make a break for it and run off into the snow. David catches up to Ellie, but Ellie manages to stab David in the chest. We then return to Joel trying to find Ellie. After taking out a crap load of hunters, Joel reaches the burning building where Ellie is. Ellie manages to crawl to a machete and kills David just as Joel arrives and makes sure Ellie is okay. We have another small time skip where we are making our way across a highway. We get a few collectibles before heading into a bus station where we grab a few more collectibles including interacting with a giraffe. He's all right. Come here, come here. Joel and Ellie continue down the highway where we find a medical camp and unlock the sharpest tool in the shed trophy for finding all workbench tools. Nearing the Firefly Hospital, we continue into a tunnel where we get another trophy for finding all manuals. There. Getting past all the infected, we scale across some vehicles, we find the final workbench and unlock the prepared for the worst trophy. We then make our way out of the tunnel where we almost drown and we are captured by the fireflies. We wake up in a hospital bed where Marlene, the firefly leader who gave us Ellie, is waiting for us. Marlene tells us that they must perform surgery on Ellie's brain to reverse engineer a vaccine, but in doing so, Ellie will die. Joel, refusing to let Ellie die, even for a vaccine, fights back against the fireflies to try and save Ellie. We then have to make our way through the Firefly base, killing a bunch of fireflies while also grabbing a heap of collectibles. We make it to the room where Ellie is and take out the doctors. I won't let you take her. This is our future. Think of all no! Grabbing an unconscious Ellie, we make a break for it. <laughs> oh, shit. On the way out, we are confronted by Marlene who pleads with us to allow the fireflies to perform the surgery to make a vaccine. You can still do the right thing here. We then cut to Joel driving away with Ellie in the back seat, alive and well. What the hell am I wearing? We then see what actually happened between Joel and Marlene. They've stopped looking for a cure. Playing as Ellie, we get the trophy for finding all comics. Ellie then confronts Joel about whether or not he's telling the truth. Right now, swear to me. I swear. And we get the trophy for completing the part one campaign. After this, we need to go back and get any collectibles I missed during the first playthrough. And we get the trophy for finding the last Firefly pendant, the trophy for upgrading every melee weapon and destroying it, and the trophy for opening every shiv door. Since this is the remake version of The Last of Us, we must complete the DLC trophies to get the Platinum. The DLC switches between two stories. The first, set three weeks before the events of The Last of Us, following Ellie as she spends time with her best friend Riley. And the second takes place between the fall and the winter chapters of The Last of Us, when Joel was gravely injured. Starting off with Ellie and Joel, Ellie sets out to find some medication. 
Ellie breaks into a doctor's quarters where we find a med kit, but unfortunately it's empty. Spotting a crashed military helicopter, we make our way towards it before switching to the other story. Following Riley through a broken down mall, we get a whole bunch of collectibles and go through a Halloween store trying on a bunch of masks before Riley challenges us to a brick throwing contest. Winning the brick throwing contest gets us the brick master trophy. Before returning to present day Ellie, where we're trying to find power to open a gate we need to get through. We find a generator, but it is out of fuel, so in order to get some, we must deal with some stalkers. What was another one? Oh, and siphon the fuel out of a nearby truck. After getting the fuel, we start the generator. Oh shit, oh. We escape the infected and make our way up to the crash helicopter, which has a health kit on board, which we need to heal Joel. We then cut back to the story with Riley. We ride a carousel before reading from our joke book once again, unlocking the That's All I Got trophy for listening to all of Ellie's jokes. There was once a cross-eyed teacher who had issues controlling his pupils. Oh, that's, that's mean. Yeah. Ellie and Riley then make their way down to a photo booth, which unlocks the Getting to Know You trophy for engaging in all optional conversations. Start. Ellie and Riley then make their way into an old arcade where we get a trophy for playing a racing game Stupid. and then another trophy for playing an imaginary fighting game. Ellie and Riley then engage in a water gun fight where we beat Riley in a best of three game and get the skills trophy. Oh. We return to the present day where Ellie runs into a bunch of hunters. We take them out and crawl through a vent, finding a recorder and unlocking the trophy for finding all notes and artifacts. <sighs> that is a relief, holy crap. On the other side of the vent, we spot some infected and some hunters. So we throw a brick and get a trophy for using the other humans as live bait. Yes. We make our way back to Joel, but must fight off a heap of infected and even more hunters. Before we cut back to Ellie and Riley. Ellie and Riley are running away from a horde of infected. Escaping outside where we just managed to fight off the infected. Before realizing that we've both been bitten. In the present we see Ellie saving Joel. And in the past, we see Ellie and Riley deciding to just wait it out and go infected together. We complete the DLC and get the Don't Go trophy, which unlocks us the Platinum trophy for The Last of Us Part 1. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and comment down below which games you want to see me Platinum next.